CJ Antis picks and bans for game number one, and there's that Maokai ban against CJ. So GE just not even wanting to deal with that pick. Trying to shake up the top lane a little bit. All right, well, you assume they're going to take it in the first round of the draft on the red side. They usually Victor do. will be banned against Kuro. And here's the interesting thing is that we do see a lot of champion crossover between Kuro and Coco right now. And But Kuro maybe has a more shallow champion pool than Coco. We've come to realize after that last set. Yeah. Has GE going, are they going to bring anything new to the table? There is an Annie ban. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is, is Annie, out of the champions this season that he's played more than one game of, does have his highest win rate technically. And it's only two and one. It's a really small amount of games, but he has made the most plays, quote unquote, I suppose, on Annie in recent memory. So there you go, Annie ban. Also, I think GE just afraid of hard engage in general and the ability to pick up easy kills in the laning phase, which was their undoing in Katowice. There is a Lulu taken away. LeBlanc probably going to be the first choice here. Pretty comfortable pickup for Kuro. I'm a bit surprised to see the Lulu actually. Oh, Ow, okay. Sivir. All right, well, Space is, Space is a very good Sivir player. So yeah, taking this is, that away. This is a really different draft, though, uh, yeah. than we've seen from GE before. Obviously, they've loved that. They like first picking AD carries on blue side, but previously it was Corky. And instead, it looks like they've reevaluated. Uh, we were discussing this before the cast, but Sivir kind of fell off in Korea for no good reason yeah. while it stayed up in the other regions. And yeah. frankly, I think Sivir is always, unless her laning phase gets nerfed to the point of auto losing, her ultimate is just so powerful in the professional scene that she's a champion that I think is always quite viable. So I was a bit, I was a bit shocked to see that. Well, Ambition maybe taking the Jarvan Lissandra heading over. Now, Coco has not played much Lissandra in mid lane this season, but. And Shy has been pretty mediocre. Ooh, they may take Rumble. Shy has not been great on Rumble either. Debating between the two. They're going to go with the Rumble. All right. Two picks over to the GE Tigers now. I would be really worried about Smeb playing Lissandra now. Smeb hasn't played a lot, but you saw how incredibly dominant his performance on at IEM was on that champion. His teleports were so good against Cloud9. Certainly can play it. Uh, it was a bit of a surprise to see them because GE not generally considered a Lissandra playing team. Oh, they're going to grab it here, almost certainly. And what else do you take? Do you maybe grab the support here? Oh, just grab the lease in, I suppose, for Lee. Pretty solid stuff. They could change it over yet. You don't really need to take the jungler right now, but you also don't necessarily want to give away too much. And they will just lock in that lease in. Probably pretty smart of them not to, to give the Lissandra up. Coco has been playing in solo queue, not really a general mid lane pick for CJ, but giving Lissandra and Rumble give you such an insane power spike that yeah. if CJ was able to dive turrets, could be causing quite a few problems. They are mulling over the Corky right now versus the Lucian pickup, and I think the Nami, a uh, great choice considering their composition so far. Yeah, it works very well. And uh, okay, so they may go ahead and grab the Kogma with this, and they sure will be able to create a lot of space for space. That wasn't intentional, but they'll be doing it. They'll get a lot of room to uh, fire those alts to auto attack. And we still have yet to see what Coco is going to play. The final two picks with the GE Tigers now. Gorilla thinking about that Leona. Yeah, they're really going all in right here. This is not they are. a standard GE composition. They really like Peel in their supports. They really like Disengage. So Feels like a TF game. This is a, this is definitely a bit of a mix-up. It's really dangerous to blind pick TF. You can get zetted really fast. He wants to get in on that Kog'Maw, though. The temptation. <laughs> the temptation of the gold card, Monty. Girl's feeling it right now. Ah, LeBlanc. but LeBlanc's still up. Yeah, Way <laughs> probably safer. a better pick. <laughs> yep. Well, Coco, you can pick TF, but I don't think that works really with the comp too well. Not too well. Rise would be interesting. But what do you think about, uh, what do you think? Well, you can, if you hit your rune prison on LeBlanc, you can catch her and it's then true. trade with her. Cassidy and Nerf, Cassidy used to be a decent matchup versus LeBlanc. Yeah, not anymore. Oh. The manor. Oh boy. I hey, hope they do it. CJ, you were at that tournament two years ago. <laughs> you didn't even make it as far as GE did. I don't know about that. Oh, mid Jarvan, right? 
Okay, Coco maybe with the Diana pickup. Still some time. Hmm. What do you think about a... Uh, I don't know. I think they're going to go with Diana. They need some more uh, peeling potential and all-in oh, okay. potential to go with the Rumble. This will keep uh, space safe just because he won't be a priority target compared to Rumble and Diana. I was gonna th That's a good say, comp from CJ. It's a good comp. Yeah. I was going to say, what do you think about a Zed? But I think the Diana makes a little bit more sense here. So we saw how this Kogma versus Sivir matchup went in the last game. Yeah. Kogma really able to push Sivir off the wave early and get a large CS lead. And so, but there is hard, there is hard engage with that Leona in the bottom lane. So Lee will have some kill pressure right there onto Cog early, but he's really going to have to do some work to help Prey get some CS if they don't lane swap. CJ has a pretty serious wombo combo potential going on here as well. Two people getting trapped on an equalizer. Diana brings you in again when you try to get away. Like, there's a potentially yep. a lot of AOE damage going on from CJ and <laughs> And space is going to actually be pretty free in yeah. this game just because of how much of a front line there is. Three champions all with a lot of CC right in your face. So GE needs to do some work to get back on a Kog'Maw. Smeb's going to have to look for some flanks, actually, yep. to see if he can get that ult off. It's not a Juggermaw composition, but it is a composition that Kog'Maw can thrive in. Yeah. Bit dangerous if you fall behind late, but we'll see. That's right, GE versus CJ, game number one. Let's do it. Here we are. Welcome to Summoner's Rift GE Tigers versus CJ Antis. And both teams with uh, a lot to prove to their fans and to the community and to the people doing the LOL Power Rankings for Riot. <laughs> as far as like where they stand in this scene. I know Frank Fields is watching. He's got both <laughs> eyes like propped open like in the end of Clockwork Orange right now. He's ready to see. And that is Ambition Jarvin. Jarvbition? <laughs> Well, this should be an interesting one. GE really has to figure out how they're going to disrupt this Kog'Maw. They have the tools to do it, a lot of mobility uh, with the Lissandra and the LeBlanc to chunk the Kog'Maw out, but they're going to have to play pretty creatively over walls and with flanks in order to disable this. They don't want to group up against CJ at all. Yeah. Unless they have a very large lead. So CJ needs to be extremely cautious about warding their flanks because if if they commit to trying to kill somebody on GE, we see Rumble go in, we see Jarvan Cataclysm, we see the Luna Rush from Diana, they need to know that there isn't a LeBlanc or a Lissandra coming over a wall onto Kog'Maw mm -hmm. because that will, as soon as Kog'Maw is dead, that front line will then get pincered and collapsed on with Sivir. It will be an absolute disaster for CJ. Yeah, this will be a real test of vision. But this game for these guys. If CJ can get on all five of them, if they can just move forward onto five people. Oh, that guy says, my girlfriend is in diamond, and her says, my boyfriend is in gold. <laughs> wow, what do you know? Cool. So, yeah, they need, to, they need to make sure. CJ wants to just fight in one direction. GE wants to fan out and try and find some angles. So flank warding going to be very important for CJ, and they have to be super careful about how and when they commit. Or they will be in trouble. Yeah. You know, the night after uh, the GE Tigers lost to WE, it was one of those, like, sitcom moments where you wake up and you're like, whoa, I just had the worst dream. And then you, like, <laughs> turn on Reddit and you see it's true and you're like, no! <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think that happened to a lot of us. It's pretty shocking. But in the end, I think uh, two things happened for GE Tigers at IEM Katowice. They got a little bit too cocky and they underestimated their opponents. Oh, well, three things. And they let it get in their head, too. Yeah, they underestimated they only one opponent, which was interesting, because when we look at their games versus SK and Cloud9. Oh, yeah, it, very it, convincing. Very tight. Well, it's just the planning was there. They really, You yeah. really felt like they understood what the threats were from their opposition, but it really didn't look like they knew what to do against WE. Yeah, it, major it, underestimation. Yeah, very, very big. Well. Nobody expected uh, Xi, I suppose. <laughs> right in the Lee wall. Sin. 
Get out of the wall, Lee. He's trying to escape from the League of Legends. Quick, stop him. <laughs> Lee's like, get on my level, Lissandra. Hey, there's a little Bard logo thing on there. The Bard logo. Bard is so fun. He's certainly my favorite champion to come on a long time. It's great. Battle, Battlecast Kog'Maw actually looks really cool. I guess I'm just tired of robot skins. Dude, you can never get tired of robot skins. No, you can never get tired of robot skins. I meant you as in the, the general plural you, as in one cannot get tired of robot skins. All right, well, we actually have a lane swap right here. I think that CJ was trying to call it because it should be a pretty good matchup for them. And said Mad Life coming in with a bit of annoying harassment right here onto the blue buff. That'll be given over to Smeb, actually. Yeah, I guess so. Smeb, interesting. So they're going to send him into that bot lane with the blue buff. And Lissandra, you know, is a bit of a mana hog, despite her passive giving her free spells every once in a while. So this will help him keep up in the 1v2, I suppose. Yeah, although the free is coming back mm, in yeah. CJ's direction right now, so he will need maybe a little bit of help breaking that. That harassment from Nami Kogma is pretty brutal in a 2v1. It's kind of similar, though, to what Shai did on Maokai the other day, you know, getting that quick level two. Or they, they have also given him the blue buff in the past. Giving the top laner the blue buff going into a lane swap seems to be kind of a trend these days. They're going for both blues, actually. Yeah. Starting and an invade right here on their strong side with Gorilla. I don't think Ambition can stop this. Well, Shy is there, too. Can Ambition they do has it? no Smite. Like, I don't... Yeah, they're just going to load some damage on Shy, trying to do everything he can. But Smite is used. Lee gets it. There's a stun onto Shy. They're in a little bit of trouble here. Mad Life with the ebb and flow to get a little bit more HP onto their top laner. All right, three buffs start from GE yep. as they walk from blue to blue. And now they'll just retreat, try and take this a little more safely. Shy looks like he's going to be walking into lane at the moment. Hmm, okay. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty risky, especially since, well, they've got wards in the river, so they know there's no... Yeah, I think he's okay. Fine. He will be okay with that life there. Now, uh, in the third game of CJ against KT, they actually quad buffed them. They got all four at the beginning of the game. And that was pretty rough. Yeah, CJ, on the receiving end of the buffing, the buff stealing this time. It's not yep. really, it doesn't really matter that much, but Smeb going to teleport to the top side. TP advantage right now for Shy. The next few minutes. And Smeb, knowing the bad life is in the bottom side, and with this blue buff, he will be able to shove this wave in quite easily. And reset the lane for himself as he hits level three. Yep, should be a problem. Oh, that might be a problem. Smeb in a little bit of trouble trying to get with that E. He makes it. The knockup for Ambition didn't quite do what he wanted it to do. Yeah, no other crowd control. No other crowd control in that lane, and you have to chain the knockup into another form of CC to stop the E from yeah. being used, the follow-up on the E. So there's very little chance that he was actually even going to blow a summoner in that top side. So I'm not really sure I agree with Ambition's gank. If he had done it before, perhaps the freeze was broken. That'd be one thing. But we did see Space kind of tank the minions right there, try and get him close to his his turret again. Here we go. Q on to Shy. Going to take some damage, but he gets out in time. Mad Life tries to land that Aqua Prison, but doesn't hit him. Looks like Gorilla's going to go back. Maybe to join Smep in the top lane. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Let's see, he needs to get some wards down up around that top side just to keep mm. Smeb safe. So, yeah. probably going to be the first order of business right there. And, you know, now that GE has that blue timer for CJ, I have to check and see if there's going to be a follow up on that to try and deny Coco for a while. Uh, Coco already having some trouble getting poked out in this mid lane ambition. Gets the scuttler there, so well, that'll help. he will keep eyes onto Gorilla. Gorilla just very tentatively putting some wards in, knowing that Jarvan can't really be there right now, and he does have Lee to back him up. Maybe going for a mid lane gank at the moment. Coco has to be super careful. He should know this is coming. Leona is definitely topside right now. Coco's not even back to lane yet. So they're going to be waiting a long time. Ooh, is it going to be time to dive the Kog'Maw? Might be. He's still got flash and he's still got heal, but I think Space could be in a bit of trouble. He's poking out Smep pretty actively. There we go. Comes in with the E, locks him up with the W. Smep taking a lot of damage. Gorilla misses that Zenith Blade as Space flashes out. 
They got the teleport out of Shy at least. So right. they got a couple summoners. They got two summoners for it in. Yeah. Oh, Smeb might be in a little bit of trouble though. Oh, that's really close. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Kogma didn't have any more mana though. Yeah. So that was a little bit of a close call right there, but not quite enough follow up. Also, Smeb had flash. Knock up on the prey. He flashes. Doesn't use that summoner heal yet. So teams full th are forcing summoners out of both AD carries so far. Yeah. Good attempts, I think, from both sides right there. Yeah. Getting these little advantages where they can. And now it's just about who can follow up better. And Coco taking so much damage, even landing the chains is Kuro. Look at this. Yeah. GE still committing to making plays. Lee over the side. They don't. Well, they do see them. Yeah, Coco's on the run now. The plan is dive all the lanes. Coco's Henneth Blade does not quite connect. Still the damage coming in from Kuro. Not enough, though. They're just going to go after that mid turret, do a lot of damage there, or a little bit of damage there. It's a I, good amount of damage. I really like the fact that we're seeing GE make some more aggressive plays early on. You don't typically see them as a team that is willing to dive between Tier 1 and Tier 2 in mid lane this early on into the game. Yeah, very true. So not as much passive play as we've seen previously. And with this, with this team composition, you can't play passively. You have to try and use it to go all in. They got a nice pink ward into the CJ jungle there at the same time. Getting him a little bit more vision. They have great wards around the mid lane too, so Kuro is free to play aggressively right now. You know, right now, one of the main stories to me is the pretty big CS lead that Smeb has, but that damage, a little bit onto Coco, but yeah, Smeb. About 16 CS, 17 CS above Shy at the moment. He also has a level lead, and because True. Mad Life has been in his lane, and this means that he has TP advantage and he has ult. This is a perfect time for GE to make a play. As Shy Let's heads up into the top side, still not level six. Lissandra can definitely do something right now, especially bottom with that flashless Kogma. And the heavy push that's going in. Let's, really watch, let's watch where Lee is going. Actually, somebody's pinging the bottom side right now. There's a ward in that brush, but they need to all in this. Prey has level six as well, and the TP is still not available for Shy. There is no more perfect time to make a play and go take the dragon. Yep. Well, it was a pretty small window either way. Uh, it's the window's still here, but instead Lee decided to go get red buff. Yeah, they still do have TP advantage. That's true. Yep. I was looking at the level six for Shy. You know, they, I don't believe they had a ward originally in River. I think the ping was to get Gorilla to go up and place one in case they wanted to come in. Okay. But they have it. Okay. Coming down around. Dragon he wants to go now. through Try. There's, there's, there's dive everywhere. coming in. There's, uh, there's so little time, though. TP's going to be back up for Shy. Reduce cooldown because of the cancel. Yep. So that's it. GE missed a timing right there. Hmm. A little bit of a brawl in the top lane. Let's say trade some damage. Vision is really good for GE around this dragon, but can they force CJ away long enough to go take it now? Shy had to use Equalizer. They got the timing back now. He had to use Equalizer to clear the wave. And that could be big. Ambition, They've got the wave pushed up. Ambition smartly on the bottom side of the map, though. Yeah. LeBlanc's coming down. This is this is a real good timing. We'll see if they do it. Lee and Kuro going deep into the jungle, trying to find Ambition, perhaps? I think they saw him with that ward. Unless they put it down right now, I didn't quite catch it. You can really tell how risk averse GE is, though. Yeah. They, when they see that pink ward, they go ahead and take it out. They, with Ambition in the bottom side, it is legitimately a bit risky. Uh, something can always go wrong on a dive, especially when the jungler is there and Ambition has the Cataclysm. Hmm. But instead, they're just farming up CJ is not going to be punished for that earlier TP. Yeah, back to a really passive game here. Looks like maybe they'll go up now. Moving into the river, but we'll see if they follow through. Ambition is still there. He's going to recall, though, right now. But they won't. They shouldn't see it. Yep, and GE, of course. They have no problem at all being patient, so I think they're just going to wait this one out now. See if they can find another opportunity. And you know, like we mentioned earlier, that's what GE does. They just wait for those perfect moments. They still have to hit a mid-game timing because the thing about CJ's composition 
is that with LeBlanc and Lissandra on GE, space, his QSS is going to be ridiculously cost effective for him in the late game. Gets that magic resistance in there and will be able to just pop right out of the Lissandra ultimate. And Mad Life, of course, will be going for the Crucible as well. So there's, they've got a lot of tools, actually. And we will see double Zonias from them as well onto Shy and Coco. So I, I'd have to give, just in terms of the item advantage, when you have these very bursty mages on the GE Tigers, and if you contrast them to Rumble and Diana, who can consistently output damage in team fights, I think that CJ, especially because that Kog'Maw oh. 2 will have an edge. Coco flashes immediately. They get him with the Lissandra ult anyway. There's a chance. Do they lock in? They do. Coco in big trouble. Lee gets low, though. Shy comes in to try to equalize. First blood goes to Kuro, but they're going to get another one themselves. Ambition going to help Shy pick up the double, so CJ ends up with two kills, make Mad that life. three as Mad Life gets bloodthirsty, takes down Lee, and this should be a dragon for CJ as well. Uh, GE invested so wow. much into that yes, they did. Uh, when they were still very close to turret, and Coco did get the Moonfall off right before he died, just bringing them all in for Shy's equalizer. Great TP from Shy in order to get in and make the play right there. And GE, they made, it, they made that play actually at a risky time because they didn't have TP advantage. The equalizer wasn't down. They sat on their hands. And here we go. Smab committing really hard for that one. Coco get kick, gets kicked out. Chains do end up landing as the Great Lunar right Rush there. comes back in. Look at that equalizer, though. An absolute beauty. And Gorilla goes right in onto it. And they're able to bottle everybody up with the Cataclysm. Easy double kill. Oh, I wanted to see Mad Life kill Lee. Oh. It was just a, it was an ebb and flow and then an auto attack, Della. It wasn't that exciting. It's just fun to see. It's exciting <laughs> to me, Monte Cristo. <laughs> well, Coco's able to push up this lane, get a decent amount of time, probably can finish that Abyssal Scepter in the very near future. And Space, very close to the uh, Trinity Force, actually, even after not really being a part of that fight. Well, GE still with the lead, thanks to the massive CS advantage that Smeb has. Yeah. And Kuro has for the laning phase, but that was... A nice move from CJ, and GE has to do something with this all in. Uh, two Abyssal Scepters that are incoming from CJ are going to be very helpful, especially because once you get the Abyssal and the Zonias, I mean, if you have the Abyssal and they can't, and GE can't blow you up with LeBlanc and Lissandra, well, Diana's going to get on to Prey, and Prey will not be able to auto attack, so there's going to be not a lot of AD. Aqua Prison on to Kuro in the knockup as well. They're going to finish him off with that Tidal Wave. Yep, that's a kill for Coco. Face checking bushes. Yep, dangerous stuff with a Nami or really with anybody around. Uh, especially he didn't have flash. He is long, but ambition with the crowd control able to make a play right there. And they chained their CC pretty well. I think ambition had a little bit of overlap with the knockup after you know going through the Aqua Prison, but bad enough. Here comes Coco coming down on Diana. There goes Coco going up to the mid lane on Diana. <laughs> well, he can just wait right now. Yeah. It was very good for them to capitalize on GE's over aggression. And GE just not comfortable making plays in the early game, even when they have very clear wi timing windows to do so. So I, I get what GE is trying to do. They're trying to do. They're trying to play a, a bit of a different style, but don't clearly know their limits in terms of what they can do. Well, GE is one of those teams that has a, you know, uncanny, uncanny ability to come back, but against a team like CJ, it's really not going to be easy. Well, thanks to their, their great laning phase, they're not doing too badly. Yeah, yeah they're down yeah. a few kills, but it certainly isn't the end of the line. It's a very tiny gold advantage for CJ, but. Oh, Coco, trying to set something up for Ambition, but Kuro just walks away. Wow, that turret in top getting really low. Looks like Smep's about ready to take it out. There's the Equalizer, and they're going to go in. W slows down Shy just a little bit, snares him for a moment. Here comes Ambition. Flash over the wall, actually E over the wall for Smep. They're going to go in on, onto him anyway with the Cataclysm. That should be a pretty easy kill despite all that damage onto Jarvan. They pay for the tower with Smeb's life. I'm really surprised he decided to 
E in that direction over the wall like that because Lee yeah. was actually coming up and they had really nice wards in the river to see that no one else was going to be able to react. So it was a bit odd. I wonder if he thought maybe he could burst down Ambition perhaps if he got him kind of on his own. Uh, I, I it guess. Was it was but puzzling. Even so, that's still a death and trading yes, out is. your top lane for the jungler, maybe not the best trade you can make in the world, but oh, GE to get starting to take down that outer ring of turrets. They've caught right back up in terms of gold, and so at least for GE, they have done a they have done a solid job of chipping the towers, and so they'll unlock a bunch of global gold soon with that mid lane and start to get control. And that's that's oh. going to be the key <laughs> for the GE Tigers because once that mid tower goes down, they need to start making picks with their composition. And if they can't do that, CJ will probably roll right back into this game and take it late due to their composition and the itemization they're going to have against G GE. Yeah. I would be quite worried. Well, Space is getting an opportunity to get a solid amount of poke onto this turret here. Mad Life and Ambition supporting him from the river. There they are. And another sort of suspenseful moment to this game is Ambition. Ah, he gets spotted <laughs> with the Scrying Orb. They knew it was up. Yeah, League recalling right there too. So that yes. was dangerous to walk forward when they had no guaranteed jungle support. Kuro has had a lot of pressure this game too, but he just hasn't been roaming. And that's the thing is Kuro has opted instead to get a lot of autos onto the mid lane tower instead of making plays on the map with the pressure. So he needs to make that pay off right now. He sacrificed potentially some helping in the laning phase to destroy a, the tower a little bit faster. And so you have to convert that into something when the turret actually goes down. Right. Well, Dragon up in 25 seconds now. Let's see who's able to take this one. First one did go over to CJ, of course. G needs to eliminate wards. They have to catch somebody around this dragon pit. They want to be successful. Yeah. And Mad Life, I mean, I know he just missed that one there, but he's been pretty on with his Aqua Prison so far this game. He's been playing a pretty good Nami. Yeah, he's also been in exactly the right place at the right time, right? Yeah. Oh, that's part of the part of the trick of playing a good Nami. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, flash alt onto space. There's a nice solar flare. Very good. Yeah, Cogma had Clean no kill. chance to get away there. And he'll just absorb the yeah. Kathy and surprise with his spell shield, not even taking any damage. And Why not? CJ may have some troubles. Now they still have Equalizer. And they still have a decent amount of damage coming up from Coco as well, but that dragon's going to need to be given up. So dragon's all tied up. One apiece for the GE Tigers and CJ Antis. And now CJ, they'll see if they can maybe respond with a bit of lane pressure, you think? Yeah, they really need to get this mid lane turret down, but they're actually going to opt for bot instead, considering he does have a bit more HP. That's good. I mean, Prey can kill this. He'll get the solo gold, gold recall, and then they can push mid and uh, get that ward line down after a buy from Prey. So that's actually a, a better call at the moment, considering that the mid lane turret is about two silver auto attacks away from dying anyway. Look at the mass recalls coming in. They had the pressure. Uh, CJ already went back. So they're trying to power up for a push coming in right now. And the Infinity Edge complete with the Zeal as well for Sivir. Yeah. So here's, here's a really good timing. GE did a good job of controlling the Dragon and starting to snowball their advantage right here. Ambition taking hope. Very important that they get that down right now so they can finally attempt to clear out this turret. Here we go. go. Might have been a fight. Ambition caught with Lissandra. Solar Flare comes down as well. Now Gorilla going deep onto Mad Life. Turret hits taking him very, very low space. Backing up, just trying to do some damage, but he's got no front line. They're going to have to give up that turret. And we'll see if GE wants to push for more here. Coco, Coco trying to split push. Man, they're going to lose another turret probably. I, yeah, I think so. Without Coco there, with no front line for space, there's not a lot they can do. That turret getting very low. Oh, nice play by Kuro, too. Getting in to finish off a of Mad Life, but here comes Shy. That allows space to walk up a little bit farther, but GE with a pretty smooth disengage. Oh, At down about lane, Smeb, flash from Coco. He gets him. Yeah, but is he going to be finished off? Gorilla and Lee heading down into that bottom side right now. Coco trying to recall <laughs> in the brush. Recall, yeah, recall. Yeah, he's not going to make it out of this one. Uh, I don't think so either. Q. Oh! Whoa! Oh! What? They don't know he's there now. How did that happen? Wow. Tricky Coco. 
Man. How did he dodge that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't actually know. He's like, you know, I thought only agents moved like that. <laughs> He's the one. <laughs> well, that was amusing. Yeah. Wow, did not think he'd get out of that one. CJ pushing down the mid lane now. GE also did not get the tier two yeah. in the mid lane. They very, very close. And Smeb teleported in order to try and save that turret there without his ultimate up. So mm. quick and dirty all in from Coco, who already has his two core items. He's going to be feeling really good right now. Yeah, that was very fast. Wow, that actually ended up working from CJ just because they didn't get the tier two in the mid lane and Coco actually managed to escape <laughs> I a still dicey don't know. situation. That was, that was a lot like one of those magic tricks where the person gets in the box and then they just open it and there's no one there, you know? The box <laughs> just falls apart. Because we didn't see. I like how the uh, observer, you know, turned off the vision for CJ's side. What a mind game that was. GE's yeah. going to be so furious after this game. I, I think they're probably just confused. They're <laughs> like, where did he go? He couldn't have possibly been anywhere else. I guess they figured they just missed his port by like a quarter second Apparently. or something like that. Oh, Coco has a ward there, so he's able to see everybody from GE. I think they're aware now. Space giving Prey a little bit more mana back. No TP for GE right now. Yep, that's allowing Shai to put some pretty decent pressure on this top lane, too. Yeah, who's going to go clear out the top lane, actually? Good question. Because they can't afford to let Prey leave. Looks like they are going to send LeBlanc. But this can also prompt an all-in in the mid lane if they see LeBlanc in the top side. But Shai actually not going to go for turret damage. No wards, so a bit risky. Well, another short break in the action. GE still a couple thousand gold ahead. But CJ is certainly threatening. This is a, a very close game. Very different series than our first set of the night, huh? C yeah, definitely. CJ also has a very strong 1-3-1 one, one split push right here. GE yeah. not so much. Their split push not going to be too great. They need to play. They're, they're basically running a big pick comp right now. Meanwhile, CJ has more uniform pressure across the map with the Diana and the rumble, and of course, space is long range to take down the turrets. They have plenty of disengage between Nami and Jarvan. And on top of all that, the dragon's back up in a minute. So more for these two teams to worry about. Right now, the vision in GE's favor. Around the dragon pit. Smep trying his best to do a little bit of split pushing, but Coco should be able to stop that easily. I'm not actually sold on this Blade of the Ruin King. Second on Kogma in this particular game. I can understand going Vamp Scepter, but I think they're going into Infinity Edge right here because you really want to poke out LeBlanc. And if you get one auto crit on LeBlanc with an Infinity Edge, considering that looking at Kuro's build, he's not anywhere near Azonia's Hourglass right now, could be really, really valuable for space. And yes, he is going to be, he is going to want lifesteal when he gets poked, but I, I would think that that Infinity Edge would be pretty key you have to on imagine. these low HP champions that GE is trying to maneuver in team fights. I feel like from Space's perspective, if anybody gets close enough for him to use that item on them, it's already too late. I, if you look I, at I if you look of, at the GE team, yeah, I, I yeah. kind of feel the same way. So, yeah, you're gonna get burst by Kuro. You're gonna get ulted by Smeb. Prey backing off then, he's going to pop that ultimate. Ambition. Wow, Ambition takes a lot of poke on his way out. Uh, so does Prey, though. True enough. So about equal in terms of poking. Prey's going to try and go lifesteal a little bit off of the mid wave. Siveralt used as well there. And that's uh, pretty big with Dragon up right now. Kuro trying to poke, get some damage in on the Shy, but CJ suddenly in a position where they might be able to get this Dragon. The Speed Shrine is about to run out as well, too, for GE. Oh, this is, this is dangerous. It is, it's gone. This is dangerous for CJ. This is the positioning that GE wants. That could be a very good solar flare coming in from Gorilla very, very soon. Are they going to do it? Lissandra doesn't come in. They walk up, and they're actually going to get it. GE takes the dragon. Meanwhile, that solar flare does go down, locks up a lot of CJ players. And look at this, Kuro coming in for the double kill. Shy manages to get a bit of revenge. And now Coco turning it around, getting those resets, gets the double, triple. And now it could be a Quadra Lee over the wall, and Coco gets the Quadra kill. 
Wow, yeah. CJ turned that one around. And the reason why they got it was because they pulled back. Had they committed to taking that dragon in that flank, that's exactly the position from the side that CJ wanted. But they were smart to pull back here so that there was only one vector of attack uh, coming in. So there you see Gorilla going in. They think they can get space, and indeed they do, but they, right they commit away. so much on his face, and Kuro actually got knocked up out of his W right there and taken out of that fight really early on. Coco able to clean up because GE funnels into a choke with Cataclysm and Equalizer. So uh, GE should have been happy to get the Dragon and then pull right back out because their positioning was no longer optimal for their team composition. They gave CJ that one-sided one choke point fight that their composition really excels at. Yeah. And in spite of getting the Dragon, Thanks to Prey, this CJ is super dangerous now. This is exactly where they wanted to be at about 30 minutes into this game. It's tough for Gorilla, man. I mean, when you see people grouped up on the enemy team like that, and you're playing Leona, you have that, you know, compulsion to go in. But yeah, I just you got to respect the uh, the rumble really more than anything. Yeah, I think in that situation you just have to back out because funneling right into Shy's ultimate is gets ugly. Yep. Well, Shy kind of, he, you know, he doesn't have Zonias yet, but he kind of had a team kind of being his wall for him so he can use that flame spitter. They're going to catch Shy up in the top lane, though. A little bit of revenge from the GE Tigers, but now CJ chasing him. Space just walks up and kills Smeb. So top laner for top laner. CJ still in a good spot. I didn't have wards. She didn't have wards there to yep. know whether Space was coming in. You can see the pink ward from CJ and his deep by their red buff right there, making sure that GE didn't have vision. Kuro is going to find a green ward right there as he pinks his lane brush. Wow, CJ, CJ is in a really good spot in this game right now. It, it is only a small gold lead for them, but their 1-3-1 one, one split push and the fact that they are just going to outscale, they've nearly gotten that second Zonia's onto Shy, which is incredibly important. Yep, Ambition coming in over the wall, locks up two people in that Cataclysm, including Prey. Prey in a little bit of trouble, he's going to go down. Space with a kill there. Space just walking away casually as Gorilla has to flash to try to escape. Ambition chasing, and here comes Shy as well. Lee not in any sort of position to prevent this, and Coco tries to come in and steal it, but Space takes the kill anyway. GE and Tiger's in a lot of trouble here now. Got the split push going down. They didn't yep. get enough of an advantage early up against CJ. They took that bad team fight at the Dragon, which started out looking like great positioning for them, but... Oh, this Baron's gonna die very quickly, too. It is indeed down to half health already. Lee is there. A turret goes down in favor of GE in the min in the meanwhile. Kuro and Lee, can they do anything at all to prevent this one? Coco jumps out. He knew the Q was on him. Shy drops that equalizer anyway. Huge ton ult. of damage for a Smeb, though, coming in and making the difference. Baron's still alive. CJ taking a lot of damage. They were able to kill the... Wow, actually, Smeb. Using Baron the Baron killed. to pick up kills, yeah. Mad Life just got taken. Now Coke over the wall gets the kill onto Lee, and Baron will go to CJ, costing them very heavily, though. Wow, you have to be careful getting that Baron against that kind of AoE. Smith that had risky, a really man. good ult. Very risky. And Coco again coming up big. Coco has been carrying CJ so hard since their return from IEM. Yeah, what is it with Coco? He's showing us all these new champions playing so well. Where was this Coco <laughs> earlier? Uh, Coco, he's a really streaky player, Del. I, this he started this season. He was looking great, too. Then he kind of fell off. He's on a hot streak now. Yeah, definitely. And you see snap, though. Kuro takes some poke damage, or gets some poke damage down. Boom. But that was a huge ultimate. And Mad Life right there gets in range of Oops. a Baron attack, looked like, and then actually went down. Meanwhile, Coco zoning on the back of the pit, does find Lee, get the reset on his ultimate. Coco's Diana mechanics look really solid. Yeah, very crisp. Very, very crisp. That quadra kill certainly helps, too. Yeah, he He's got is absolutely now. terrifying. Yep. Uh, he could go ahead and get that Void Staff, although looks like that's what he's going to be doing. In this particular situation, I think that he should just go for Lich Bane and split push because no one on GE can 1v1 him at all. Sure. It's too tanky. Wouldn't be bad. So CJ jumping out to a 5,000 gold lead now. And they look pretty posed to hand uh, GE a loss here in game number one at least. Dragon up in 40 seconds. It would be CJ's second if they can grab it. 
GE just looking uncomfortable uh, yeah. on this more engaged and mid-game oriented composition. It's mostly just, it's not the mid-game so much because they are very good at mid-game power spikes, but it's the, it's the engaging nature of it. And they didn't find the timings in the early game when Shy had given them some some really good opportunities, I feel, to make the most out of this and aggressively use that teleport and their plethora of crowd control abilities to make some plays. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they're as used to giving themselves such a sort of tight timing window for their composition. Dragon activated by CJ. They're gonna try to get a second one to even things up and they'll have no trouble at all doing that. And also, I, I feel that they're not team fighting in the best way possible for this comp yeah. as well. Well, they look uncomfortable. Kuro not looking uncomfortable doing all that damage to Mad Life. Will he escape though? He's slowed. And can Ambition, nope, can't catch him. He can pop the passive though. No defense right here. Should be an easy tower. No prey there yep. to actually clear the waves. Mad Life advancing very carefully. Oh, it's dangerous for them to wave clear right now against CJ. A lot of tools to catch Kuro out with if he tries to poke somebody. Yep. Interestingly, interestingly enough, yeah. Oh, can that pink ward not see that? Uh, oh, never mind. It's the same color ward, so it can, but you won't kill it. You can't yeah. even kill it. You can't even make that decision, though. CJ can kill it. GE doesn't want to. Even if they could, they wouldn't do it. Well, there's Crucible done for Mad Life as well. This is yeah. pretty huge. QSS and Crucible with double Zonyas. This game is it's pretty much pretty much going to be over. I'm a bit surprised, actually, oh. that... Uh, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Ambition didn't go for a locket this game. Huh. Would be quite useful. Banshee's fail. He wants to keep himself safe. Warmogs as well. Yeah, I don't know. Here's Coco with a Void Staff now complete. Not selling his his Doran's Ring for a ward, even though <laughs> he has a sweeping lens. Hey man, that's like what, naughty, six, naughty 60 Coco. hit points? Naughty, 60 hit points. naughty Coco. You, what you need to understand, Monty, is that Diana has to get into the enemy team, and so you need every hit point you can. Yep, <laughs> served. I disagree <laughs> with you, sir. <laughs> CJ right. pushing up the mid lane now. Uh, G simply doesn't have the flank right now. Kuro will get checked in that brush by Space's ultimate. And ambition going to be split pushing a little bit, it would seem. Yeah, why not? Split push Jarvis. He's got that Banshee's Veil to keep him safe. Yeah. Well, CJ may take a while to close this one out. They have three melee champions. Yeah. Unless they, they have to be able to split push, but their Baron buff is no longer up. But they do have a huge minion wave slow pushing. So they will get that actually quite easily. All the wards for the GE Tigers were in the bottom side, so they couldn't safely make a movement over into top. So methodical turret taking. Yeah, and if you're GE, your only hope kind of rests on a, a miracle pick onto space and then winning a team fight. That's really kind of all you've got at this point. They can't kill space anymore. Doesn't seem like it. QSS. They have to try. I think that the best thing they could do is maybe try and collapse onto Shy or Coco if they're split pushing. That's about what they've got now in terms of kill pressure. But even then, the Abyssal and the Zonias on both of those champions, they can probably wait for long enough, stay alive long enough for their teammates to get over to them. Well, Shy just going ahead and working on pushing up that bot lane now. This game has been sort of periods of passive lane pushing along with periods of intense team fighting. Well, it's been C good. CJ has all the tools they need in this game right now. Yeah. They have all the items it's they had to get to in order to defeat GE. 
it's yes, it is 100% absolute their game to lose. Yeah. Another Baron up in 30, so there's no reason for CJ to push this too hard right now. Yep. They have that split pushing advantage. They will be able to use the Baron extremely effectively, and that is going to be the easiest way for them to close out this game with their composition. One interesting thing to consider in this match is that GE, of course, is already locked for the playoffs. But if they win today, they lock number one. They lock number if they, one. If, if they 2-0. They they which looks unlikely. Uh, ambition. Coming in onto Gorilla, doing a little bit of damage as a Cataclysm decides to just lock him up a little bit, I guess. Interesting use of the ultimate there. Oh, Kuro over the wall takes out Mad Life. Meanwhile, they jump onto Coco. GE, they found that moment. They're turning it around in space. He's vulnerable now. Double kill for Kuro, and this is a Baron for GE Tigers. What did we say going into this? They wait for that moment, and then they find it. They jump on it. And they take a lot of games that way. Can they take this one? I'm not so sure yet, but this is certainly going to help. Wow, Ambition getting low right now. There's the yes, Ring of Frost lockup. And... Oh, Kuro taken down by Ambition, actually. Or Ambition taken down by Kuro, vice versa. Baron, Baron a little bit low. LeBlanc will get it. Wow. Baron gets Gorilla, though. So, CJ gave them the opportunity right there. They were split up against yeah. a pick composition, and they used that Cataclysm way too early onto just Gorilla. There was no odd. point to use it right there. Look at this too. Kuro coming over the wall and just getting space and bad life instantly. Coco is chain CC'd right there with the kick. The auto critted by following over the wall. He didn't have time wow. to use his Zonia's Hourglass. And then, it, so right there, that's the fight GE wants. They want you to be isolated. If CJ hadn't committed, separately in the jungle like that. They didn't even do anything really to stop GE. Wow, yeah. so really impressive turnaround. And just but CJ really enabled that one, you know? But that's the thing is, that's what's scary about GE is they can punish you for very small mistakes, yeah, or man. so you would think. But wow, they really underestimated Kuro's damage right there. Because that W just obliterated both Space and Mad Life at the beginning of that fight, and then having that lock up on Coco. And because they killed Mad Life first, there wasn't a Crucible. If yep. Coco had gotten Crucible, pretty sure that was CJ's fight anyway, given their lead. It certainly seems that way, but at this point, you gotta think CJ might be the Death Star, but uh, GE Tigers is like, hey, no problem. I Bullseye Womp Rats in my <laughs> T16 back home all the time. <laughs> Getting right in the trench, finding that one That's tiny right. vulnerability right now. The exhaust port. Wow, I'm, I am amazed that GE managed to turn this around. It's pretty incredible. It's still, you know, you still have to think it's kind of CJ's game to lose. They, they can outlast the Baron, can't they? Yeah, it depends on if they manage to lose an inhibitor right here. And this is so dangerous. Coco's just walking into the jungle with no vision. Oh, my. Girl needs to be careful here, too. Jeez. Ooh, that was that was risky. Yeah. That cannon minion doing a lot of damage to that turret, just sitting back out of range. Now the next wave comes through. Constant threats from Smeb to come in. Coco coming from the side now. GE needs to play this as carefully as you could possibly play it. There is no room for error on either side right now. Yeah, but these two cannon minions, they've got no way to clear. Oh, Kuro, nice bit of damage onto Ambition there. Gorilla, though, oh, there's Aqua Prism, but luckily for them, no follow-up. Luckily for GE, the turret does go down. And that's the melee champion problem yeah. up against these Baron-empowered cannon minions. They don't really have a good answer. G going to be happy with what they got and recall right now. So Coco's just going to go back and try to split push a little bit. And so CJ, you know, they've more or less done it. They've outlasted the Baron. They only lost that tier two. It could have been much worse. So, so the question is, from here? is Coco going to buy QSS, or is he going to buy GA? Ah, that's a good question. I think I think he should get GA. Yeah? I think he should get GA. But it's, a, it's an interesting, interesting conundrum for him. Because, well, I don't know. I mean, if you want to upgrade your GA, as or your QSS as a six item, into Mercurial, Diana, not the worst champion to do that on, actually. Yeah, honestly, that is true. You can get a little bit of a Very benefit from the AD. You, you are an auto-attacking champion. Right. Interesting. It's an interesting thing to consider. Right. Yeah. It gives you some more mixed damage. Oh, he goes for GA, though. Oh. <laughs> it was a cool thought, but GA is a safer pick. 
Well, it is. Yeah, especially he... because that that removes the condition where if Mad Life dies, then Coco definitely dies too. Yeah. If, and... he, if he gets Lissandra ulted, that is. And do you really need more damage onto Diana right now? You've got a lot already. We'll see if he sells it though, if, he, if the passive is procced. Well, I think in that case, then Banshee's Veil would be certainly a little bit more helpful. Or a QSS. All right, GE Tigers looking at trying to put a little bit of pressure on the top lane. They've got a long time to wait until the next minion wave, but both mid and uh, bot appear to be pushing in their favor. I really don't think Ambition should be buying a Randwitz right now. I think he I think he really needs to get that locket and the Aegis for the sake of his team. You know, or if you do get the Randwitz, you should probably get the Giant Spell first. Well, he has no armor otherwise. Uh, I suppose, but there's just so much magic damage coming in. It right, but I think the health might be more beneficial. No, he's going to be an okay. auto, he's going to be an auto ranging of, of prey because he has to go in to try and deal with prey and bottle him up because that's the if prey doesn't have flash, his cataclysm is extremely useful onto Sivir to keep him there. So I get I guess I get the armor. I guess I get it. It's yeah. I, I get it, but I still think that right. had he gone for the Aegis earlier, it would have been pretty nice for his team just to have right there. Shy going for a Rylize now. Hmm. Okay. Looking to get some more crowd control in right there. I don't know if I agree with that, actually. Well, it because helps Space Chase. It helps uh, Coco Chase. Yeah, it's just that LeBlanc and Lissandra are so mobile, and Lissandra doesn't have to move once she goes in. Meanwhile, LeBlanc can just get off the Equalizer, and they also have the Sivir Ultimate to deal a little bit better. I, oh. actu I actually think a Void Staff for the Burst would have been superior in this situation because he doesn't really need the tankiness because he can always just Flame Spitter and Zonias in order to stay in the front line. So that little bit of extra HP really isn't going to be doing him any favors. But the extra burst damage, mm -hmm. that's something I think would be useful, especially since Lee does have that Locket. I, I don't like the Rylice here. There's just too much mobility from, from GE. Well, this is really odd. Baron and Dragon on the exact same timer right now. Wow, that is super weird. Yeah. I've that, never even seen that before. Well, that means they, I guess they killed one exactly a minute after the other. Right. Yeah. So this presents, obviously, a very interesting conundrum Yeah. for these teams, although nobody really on the cusp of threatening that I think it's third, fourth, it's three, fourth for three, CJ. It'd be oh, fourth three, for GE. Three versus two. CJ yeah. has two. GE has three. So that's not. I think Baron definitely going to be the bigger objective right now. They're trying to get a pick. Yeah, Crow's going to bait this one. This is nice. GE needs to come in in this big arc. Oh, Smev thinking about coming in, decides not to go for it. Ambition throwing in QE combo. He's a little bit caught now. Equalizer goes through to try to save him. He's got the Cataclysm onto Prey. Nice knockups with that tidal wave as well, too. But Prey looking okay right now. Q on to Shy from Lee Sin. Smeb has to back away. They got to get out of here. CJ really threatening now. This could lead to a Baron, too. Really good call from GE to disengage. Definitely. They killed the jungler. Now, if they can get back onto the Baron, they will have an advantage. They can force the bait on it. Um, need a little bit more health. Smeb very low, but he does have teleport. He can recall and come right back. GE definitely doing the right thing right there. Not clustering, trying to find that flank. And we did see Gorilla lock up Coco for most of that engagement, so Coco really didn't do a whole lot. Yeah. Now? Gorilla kind of low health. What do you do? Oh, they hit Coco with the Q there. Hmm. Still 20 seconds until Ambition is back up. Okay, they have a time right now, a very short time, where Lissandra's ult is up and Equalizer is not, but instead they're going to go for the Dragon. Okay, safer play. This is GE we're talking about. Yeah, that's actually smart. That was really good. Yep. And they know that CJ can't fight them right now because there is no jungler and there is no equalizer. So that's a that's a really tight timing, but they made it work. CJ. Notice that notice that they waited for Frozen Tomb to come back up before doing that. Oh, Gorilla walking right into the brush. CJ with an easy pick there. Really big mistake from Gorilla. That is huge, especially with Ambition coming right back up. That's a full minute that Gorilla is out of commission now. They didn't oh, have man. a ward directly on the Baron either. That was highly problematic. They had pink wards around the Baron, but not directly out. They're going to oh. try and trade an in-hit for it. This is, this is a good call. Well, we'll see, too, if uh, Lee can They're maybe steal this one. They're going to get an easy in-hit. Lee thinking about coming in. Now he's just going to recall. Yep. That was a really good call from GE. Yeah. They that... traded it for something at the very least. And now... Oh, they can all get back just fine, too, and defend this. 
Yeah, they and that will force the recalls in from ZJ. This is a really tense game, and there no actually kidding. haven't been that many errors made from either team in this match so far. This has been, it's uh, been one of our better games. Yeah, it's season. been really a good game. Yeah, very tightly played, and just the most minor of things costing these teams, Coco. That six item build, you can see that elixir of sorcery coming in for Kuro as well. You know, again, if you think back to just that one misplaced cataclysm from Ambition led to GE getting like a new life in this game. And even though they gave up the Baron there, they got the first inhibitor for it. Yeah, and they fought on two from there. It's really just Kuro making that one play on the Mad Life that turned yep. it around. But GE, in spite of that deficit, knowing that once they killed Mad Life, they could chain CC Coco and kill that very fed Diana. It's a really good call from GE. All right. Well. Here comes CJ. Now GE has to try to stop this. They're going to give up this tier two, which is understandable. It's not an ideal place to fight. But now at the inhibitor turret, can they prevent CJ from coming in? Can they prevent Coco from coming over the wall and destroying somebody? It's not easy for... Kuro's doing absolutely the right thing, though. Look at this. Yep, very threatening. Just trying to play the flanks because they're going to have that hard time. Look at this, taking out all the wards. Lots of wards in from GE. That's, CJ may not be able to actually pull this off. Coco's here, though, too. Yep. Oh, Q landed on Kuro. Coco's got the GA, doesn't want to follow it up. And Kuro's this gonna is go back to base. GE, they've got minion waves pushing towards CJ, so they're in a really good position. Uh, I think they popped a talisman there. Here we go. Smab thinking about coming in, doesn't do it. They're going to lose the turret. Ray gets that one. Kuro's back. They're going to try to make a pick onto Coco. GA popped. Ambition kicked out of the fight. Tidal Wave doesn't really hit anybody. Space still alive in the back line. He's able to do a lot of damage. That inhibitor is still vulnerable. Smab, is he going to go in? No, not quite. Kuro will, though. A lot of damage onto Ambition. They actually saved the inhibitor, I believe. Yeah, yeah, they did. It's very difficult for CJ to push their advantage right now. And they did what CJ didn't do right there was when they recalled, they had a chance to slow push up the mid lane and then go and actually get some pressure on the side lanes, which is what they needed. They have to split push with this Diana. Uh, with all these melee champions, it's super difficult for them to siege, even with the Baron buff. Yes, they got the turret, but they couldn't quite hold it together because once they go in the base, it makes it very easy for the flank to come in. They, it would be much more advantageous for them just to have pushed out the side lanes or started slow pushing them at the very least so there was some other pressure threat. Yeah. Uh, instead, GE gets off the hook with a relatively nice, like very easy base defense, especially yeah. because they have super minions. Well, Coco swapped over to a Banshee's Veil, but I mean, if you think about it, GE has outlasted the Baron now for all intents and purposes. They got an inhibitor and they've got that four dragon threat now against CJ. I think the Banshee's Veil is super smart. Oh yeah. Well, if the cooldown's down on GA, you just generally want to swap that out if you have the money. Ambition trying to get away, he makes it. He's been dying because of the chain CC. So if he can at least get one of those crowd control spells out of the way, it's going to be much easier for him to remain relevant in some of these fights. Yeah. Does uh, the bouncing blade from Sh from uh, Shiver pop Banshee's Veil? I don't know, actually. I've never thought of that before. Because I'm trying to think of easy ways to uh, pop it for G, and they, they really don't exist. Gorilla has two Negatron cloaks right now. <laughs> it's not bad. If you're dealing with all this magic damage, then Time feel to build. you need that extra little bit of tankiness. Time to build Abyssal on Leona. Make it happen. I think you mean Banshee's Veil. <laughs> nah. That's crazy talk. Need that extra damage, you know? Big nuke solar flare, right? That's right. Just hit you from orbit. Yeah. The old sun cannon. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the safe way. All you right, GE, you know. this is how they want to win. They want to get this fifth dragon. Very yeah. important moment. Exposed inhibitor. Away. CJ can trade for it. Yep. Picks are the key. I mean, if they trade for that inhibitor, though, fifth dragon is going to make GE so strong in a fight. Coco still hasn't upgraded his lens. That's I don't know why. That would be very helpful in this really tense vision control yeah. situation. Bizarre. Oh, that's a lot of damage onto Mad Life. Kuro doing work. Kuro really is bailing his team out this game. If he hadn't been there to, at those very key uh, moments. Mad Life recalls with 20 seconds until Dragon. He's got time. Barely. Oh, he doesn't recall. He canceled it. 
that means that if Kuro finds another angle, he can just blow him up. This is one of the tensest moments we've had all season, and they're going to go in. Lee getting a bit chased by Ambition. CJ going down into the river now. The chase is on. GE Tigers trying to get to that dragon. They're going to activate it right now. Can Look CJ stop this fifth dragon? Shy puts on the equalizer. No follow-up. The fifth dragon goes to GE. That was really fast. They stalled him out in the mid lane long enough that they were able just to get in the pit and just wow. burn it down as quickly as possible. Kuro, it was a big commitment. Kuro actually used his ult right there, but they had a way to get out of that situation as well. Oh man, that was very decisive from the Tigers. No kidding, and now they're gonna go in and take out this inhibitor again, potentially. Remember, equalizer down, CJ really has no engage, and they're gonna take it, safely pull back, move to that bottom lane now. And they can push this one up. Fairly safely, I would imagine. They've got some time. Really, it seems like it's all about that equalizer right now. Banshee's Veil popped on Coco. Kuro was able to get in and do that. Minion Wave pushing for CJ in the top They have lane, TP, though. though, so they can actually just back off with Smeb and yep. go ahead and clear if they want to. Yeah, they got the inhibitor again. They still have theirs up. They've got that fifth dragon buff for now. And they don't look terribly committed. Here comes the GE minion wave. should really just back off, clear yeah. out that wave, and then go get the Baron. That's what they should do. It seems a bit dangerous to push this. They may, I don't know about diving. Coco doesn't have a Banshee's Veil. There's a decent amount of damage onto Shy, but I think GE's feeling it too. Yeah, they're going back. That's just they a little bit too sooner, risky. They should have gone back sooner, actually, because yeah, this puts them in a situation where CJ Ooh. may be able to counter Baron. I feel a pick coming on. Or actually, I feel a Baron, Baron. defense coming on. <laughs> it's a mistake by, by GE. Oh, we'll see if it costs him. They're walking in there. Oh, Lee gets jumped on, dodges away with that safeguard. Meanwhile, Ambition getting the back lines. Here comes the tidal wave. Coco can't get over the yep. wall. Lee gets really, really low. Kuro in the back lines getting some damage in. It's a kill for space, though. GE a man down. That Baron's going to be very hard to defend. Meanwhile, their top turn a little bit of trouble. Ambition getting low as well. Ray needs to be very careful here, although he does have a GE. Gorilla, Gorilla gets very low. Shy gets the kill there. Smeb on the run. Meanwhile, Kuro comes back in, pops at Zonia. There goes the clone. There goes Kuro. A double kill now for space. CJ may have this one. They're turning around. Zonia's for Shy. Can they pick him off? Can't quite finish him, though. Smeb on the run with Prey. That's a kill on to Smeb. Smeb actually, never mind. He turns around. He gets the double. Prey's exhausted, but that's a triple for Smeb and GE. They turn around and answer in kind. It's three for four. Nobody's getting the Baron just yet. This game Crazy. is so intense. Both these teams really heading into the six item territory right now. Pretty much everybody maxed out. Let's check out how that one went down. Uh, Ambition catches Kuro over the side, gets some damage down, gets poked himself. Now we see no one following in with that claw. Gorilla does end up taking a lot of the damage. Equalizer is down, remember. And look at this, GE sweeps out the brush so that actually CJ doesn't have vision in there so they can play around the lack of vision. That gives Prey some really nice ricochet autos into the enemy team. The key moment right there was when they actually swept the brush yeah. so that Prey could get the damage on the clustered CJ. Look at Smeb goes in. What a hero. Turns it around, gets the Zonia's Hourglass down, and then right as he comes out, finds that final Q in order to pick up the kill onto Kogma, he's doing so much damage at the moment. Yeah. But wow, what a good play in the vision to get the vision out of that brush in order to really make that work. Oh, GE, they've started the Baron. They're going for it with three members yep. of CJ down yet. They should three. be able to get it without an issue. Yeah, absolutely. So three. decisive. Ambition, not there. They yep. don't they're not gonna be able to kill it too fast this time around with only prey. Oh, they'll get it though. GE still walking a mighty fine line. They didn't play that team fight perfectly. Lee got caught out and died, and yep. they only were able to kind of equalize thanks to the fifth bear or the fifth dragon stack. So I mean, there's still a comeback chance for CJ right now. It certainly is. This is still a very, very tight game, but GE has swung the pendulum a little bit in their favor right now. Gorilla needs to be careful. He's walking into a brush again. Gets the ward down just in time. Comes the Baron powered minion waves though. Gonna get that last tier two, it looks like GE. Smeb not there though, so they it. actually lose a, that really big minion wave. Yeah. When they could have been pressuring it a little bit harder. Smeb's got the teleport, doesn't want to use it to uh, come in when he can just walk up mid lane, I suppose, and push that up a little bit more too. The inhibitor's gotta be coming back pretty soon for CJ now. 
Well, they want to play this methodically, just push up the super minions so they can take the tier two. Yeah. There's not a good way for CJ to defend this, uh, but GE needs to get in there, start stripping the wards out of the jungle so that they can play behind the tower and threaten the collapse and a dive. Oh, Kuro with a lot of damage on the Shy. There's the equalizer going down. It's not ideal. Smeb, though, getting locked up. They get the kill. Can Smeb do anything before he goes down? No space gets out when Gorilla coming in now. Solar Flare, Zonia's used. And that's a double kill for Space. Can they turn it around? CJ trying. GE on the run now. Kuro comes back in. Kill Space. That's huge. A double for Kuro. GE, they can end it right here. Only ambition left. And at 56 minutes, the GE Tigers get the Baron. They get the team fight at the base. They're waiting for that final minion wave. There's Ambition doing everything he can, but it is too late. GE Tigers, this is why they're on top here in Korea. Only Prey and Kuro left. They have to kill the inhibitor again. But this is in Jin Air, so they'll be able to still win the game anyway. <laughs> there it is, game one. GE Tigers, GG. Man, every time you think you can count the Tigers out, they manage to come back under very narrow circumstances very good at playing from behind. I really did think that CJ was coming in with a big advantage, but GE found that moment of weakness when CJ overcommitted and split up in the jungle. Kuro making the plays when it mattered and finally taking that great fight with their pick composition, finding that isolated those isolated champions and making the most of it. Really close game wow. overall. And these two teams, I think, I think both of them are coming away with a bit of motivation after what happened at IEM because that was the best game we've seen all season right there. Yeah, very, very impressive. Yeah, really well played by CJ both sides. CJ stepping it up a lot too. If you compare that their performance in this game versus a lot of the ones we were seeing immediately before IEM, this yeah. is much better. And Coco really showing a lot of new champions this week, which is great to see. It gives CJ a lot more opportunities. Shy played a good rumble for most of that game. Had that great turnaround in the mid lane with yep. that teleport. Really, really close stuff right there. Well, it's a tough loss for CJ, but this is a best of three. And if they can play like they did in game number one, could easily go the other way in game two. Yeah, I will say GE definitely still looking a bit shakier when they have to make plays with some of these crowd control champions. They're True, not really yeah. known for Sivir. They're not really known for Lissandra. But they pulled it out anyway. Yep, they seem to do that, don't they? <laughs> wow, what a, what a great first game to our best of three here. Our final match of the week here on Champions Korea. Couldn't ask for anything more. The top two teams head to head. We'll see if CJ can tie it up. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back with game two right after this.